Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Movie Review Monday on a Tuesday. Uh, sorry that this video is a bit late. Uh, my internet has been screwing around a little bit and I've kind of got it fixed hopefully. So if you're watching this on the Tuesday, uh, congratulations. And congratulations to me because I got my internet fixed. Woo! Anyway, today I'm going to be bringing you six horror films to watch on Halloween in two days. Two days it is Halloween, so... Um, you need to be scared, don't you? You need to be scared on Halloween. So I thought I'd do horror movies. And uh, these are the horror movies that I like to watch on Halloween. And that scare the crap out of me. Because I'm not a... I don't get scared a lot at films. But if I get scared, it is like at uh, ghosts and stuff that people can't control. Like, uh, if you get like a serial killer, you can kind of fight back. You get a dude that's... Uh, you get a ghost that you can't see. You're screwed, you know. You can't fight back. What are you going to do? Like... Pfft, nothing. You can't fight back. Anyway, so um, another quick thing. I have decided not to do my vlogs every week because I don't really have anything to talk about that much. I'm not that interesting. So I'm hoping that uh, I'll put more gameplay up rather than the vlog every week. Of course, I will do vlogs every now and again. Like, uh, I want to do the headset review. Uh, re headset comparison, sorry. Um, but I don't know when you'll get that. You'll get it soon, hopefully, but... Don't hold me to it. But I'm going to stop doing the vlogs and I'll just do like a random game on Tuesday then or something. Something like that where I'll do like a re little review and a gameplay of it. Anyway, back to today is, is Movie Review Monday. Right, first film is Absentia. And if my uh, editing has worked, you should see a picture. This side, I think. This side of the whole, whole screen. It lo should look nice. First film is Absentia. It came out in 2011. And uh, I'm just going to read the back of it. That's going to be the quick synopsis to tell you about the story and everything. So, here we go. Absentia is, Absentia is a horror film of the year with reviews calling it scary as hell, disturbing nightmare, and, to make a, and a film to make your skin crawl. Trisha's husband, Daniel, has been missing for seven years, and with the support of her sister Callie, she finally decides to him declares him legally dead in Absentia. As Trisha tries to move on with her life, she becomes haunted by terrifying visions. Callie, meanwhile, is drawn into an ominous tunnel near the house with links to other unexplained disappearances. Does the, does the key to Daniel's fate lie in the cold darkness of the tunnel, or could the horrific truth be something far worse than death? Now, I like this film. It, uh, it is a very budget, it's a budget film, like, uh, there's, there's not many special effects in there, and, uh, there's not big actors or anything, like, two actors that are main are Trisha and Callie, the two sisters, are Courtney Bell and Katie Parker. Obviously, I don't think, I've never heard of them, but I doubt any of you have, but if you have, congratulations, you know more about movies than I do. Uh, yeah, it's a really good film, but it does rely on jump scares, mostly. Uh, it's very creepy, and uh, the music sets the tone quite nice, but the music is kind of ominous, it's in the background, and it's kind of the usual stuff, and uh, it, you, you don't really pay attention to it. But uh, the film is quite good. Director uh, Mike Flan Flanagan, this is his first film that uh, I'm really shocked with, because it was actually really good. Uh, so if you want a horror film with a few jump scares in, check out Absentia. And, um, Absentia. I keep saying it wrong, I don't know why. Uh, something else that's like this kind of thing, if you don't want to check out this one, uh, check out Grave Encounters. So... That's the first film over with. Next film is... Whichever side it's on, I don't bloody know, because I don't know how the mirror thing works on this. Uh, is Nightmare on Elm Street. The original one from 1984. Not the new one with... Um, uh, oh, my, no, I can't remember his name. Uh, oh, well. Doesn't matter. I'm not talking about that one anymore. I'm talking about the original. The original is one of my favourite horror films of all time. Because it is creepy as hell. And it is scary, and it is gory, and it is just an amazing film. Um, I don't have the synopsis here with me because I've got a giant ass box set of it rather than just the single film. So um, I'm just going to do it from memory because uh, I've seen this film quite a few times, so I kind of know what's going on. Um, a paedophile, I think he was a paedophile, I can't even, rem even remember. A guy that hanged around with kids kind of thing. Um, no, he killed kids, that was it, sorry about that. He killed kids and um, the parents of some of these kids uh, went to him and took their revenge and killed him. So he's dead now and he is taking his revenge again. Revenge, 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 revenge. Er, all, everyone's revenging against someone. Uh, he takes his revenge on the ch children of these people that killed him. So when they, they grow up kind of thing and then have kids, this guy Freddy Krueger comes out of nowhere and uh, 
you know, destroys them, basically. But he doesn't do it in the usual sense, in, like, a normal street kind of thing. He'll do them in his dr in their dreams. So, he is in there, no matter what. He can do anything. He, like, uh, makes his arms uber long, so no one can get by him, kind of thing. He tra teleports in front of people and all this kind of stuff. And it's just creepy as hell, and you have no control about it. So, you try and run in a dream, he's in front of you already, kind of thing. So, that's why this film is scary to me. No control over it. You try and run, he's there. You can't get away from him. Uh, Robert Ungland is the best, one of the best horror actors ever. He plays Freddy Krueger, and he still scares the crap out of me. Even if you see him in like a random film. Uh, I saw him in 2001 Maniacs. Not really a good film, but I'm not talking about that one today. Uh, even in that, he was great. He is a great actor. Anything he's in is really good. And this was also one of Johnny Depp's first films. So if you want to see Johnny Depp as like a really, really young dude. I don't really know how old he is. He's probably like uh, late 20s maybe. Maybe early 30s. I'm not sure. Probably in his 20s, I would have thought. Uh, this was also directed by Wes Craven. Obviously, Wes Craven is one of the biggest um, biggest horror movie writers and directors ever. He did Nightmare on Elm Street. He's done... My mind has drawn a blank... Uh, he did the, um, oh crap, what's it called? The Last House on the Left, the original one, not that crappy remake one. Because most films, most horror films nowadays are remade, and they're just terrible. With some exceptions, but I'll get into that another day, probably. Uh, the music is creepy, it's just like 80s synth music, and it, yeah, it's just like always in the background, and it's just, uh, during the horror scenes where you're in the dreams kind of thing with the kids, um... It's just there, and it's just like, oh shit, kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of jump scares in this, and there is a lot of gore. Like, I'm serious, a lot of gore. Like, dude's face gets ripped off, kind of thing. Um, but yeah, this film is incredible, and it is very scary, kind of thing. Uh, if you've seen him before, most people have, but if you haven't, check the original out. And if you've seen the uh, remake, what are you doing? Why aren't you watching the original first, eh? Oh, you bloody things. Go watch the original, Sat. Uh, anything like it, kind of thing, something like it. Uh, you can check out Friday the 13th, all them type of films, uh, and Evil Dead, Evil Dead the original. Um, that's another one that's a bit like it, kind of thing. That. So yeah, you can check out all three of them. Uh, the next one, we have The Mist. I'm going to point to both sides from now on. Or I might just point up, because that's funny, right? Next, we have The Mist. <laughs> This is a film that came out in 2007. Uh, it stars Thomas Jane as David. Uh, and they get stuck in a... Wait, what am I doing? I have the disc here, so I'm going to read the back of it for you. Uh, from legendary fright master Stephen King and Academy Award nominate, nominated director Frank Darabont comes one of the most ter tense and terrifying films since The Shining. After a mysterious mist envelops a small New England town, a group of locals trapped in a supermarket must battle a siege of otherworldly creatures and the fear that threatens to tear them apart. Starring Thomas Jane and Oscar-winning Marcia Gay Harden, Eat Gay, The Mist has been hailed by critics as one of the best horror films ever made, with the ending that continues to shock audience the world's over. This film is amazing. I love this film. I don't, the, the special effects in it aren't the greatest, but it's nice to see that they're not all CGI, which I, because I don't like CGI much, I like um, practical effects. Um, like it said, this isn't adapted from a Stephen King book. I've not read the Stephen King book, but I've read a couple Stephen Kings and they scare the living crap out of me. Uh, Frank Darabont, the director and writer, uh, he is amazing. He is one of the best directors Hollywood has. He directed The Green Mile. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Uh, he is the man that brought The Walking Dead to TV. I mean, he is incredible, and this film is up there with them, I think, because I love this film. It's just creepy, it's scary, and the ending, oh my god, you'll be so angry at the ending. It's just like, no, 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 you can't end it like that. But I like the ending because I like them kind of endings anyway. But it's an incredible film. I recommend checking this one out. It will freak you out, kind of thing. Uh, more like it, probably The Shining, if you've not seen that. And uh, Dawn of the Dead, the original, or the remake. They're both similar, kind of thing. Uh, they're a bit like it, so we, you can enjoy them. Uh, yeah, that's The Mist. Next is Paranormal Activity. 
the point up. Uh, <laughs> next is Paranormal Activity. It came out in 2007. It stars Katie Featherstone and Mika Sloat. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He's got a really weird last name. Um, these are very unknown actors, but ever since doing this film, they have hit the big leagues in like fan uh, fanboyism. I think that's how you say it, or whatever. Like, um, Katie Featherstone goes to, like, Comic-Con all the time kind of thing to meet fans and all this, and uh, she's really uh, aware of all her fans and everything, and it's really good. I love this film. A lot of people do not like this film, and I don't know why. Because this film, when I watched it first time, scared the living crap out of me. I didn't want to even go to sleep. Because the film is so simple. I'll read the back again. Um, this is a story of Kata and Mika, a carefree couple who become... Who become haunted by some by an unseen presence in their ha house? They decide to investigate the increasingly bizarre and escalating in intrusions by setting up a video camera to capture evidence of the demonic presence in their house, only to find much more than they ever imagined. Described by Harry Knowles from Ain't It Cool News as one of the scariest at-home viewing experiences ever. Harry Knowles kind of knows what he's talking about. He is quite a well-known um, reviewer, and he's uh, he started a whole website on his own kind of thing, and he is well no but I love this film it scares the living crap out of me every time I see it uh, you like you'll be staring at black for ages and then you're like something moved something no no it didn't no it's all something did move kind of thing you'll be staring at like darkness for ages and then your mind is just racing these questions like did something move uh, am I hearing this is it right that I'm hearing this because it kind of builds up the music kind of thing it just builds and builds and builds and rises and then like it'll slow down again and nothing will happen and then you're just like, as it's rising, your heartbeat's going kind of a bit, you're sat on the edge of your seat, and it's, oh, I love these Paranormal Activity films. They're really good. This one especially is the best. Um, Oren Pelly, the guy that directed it, he went on to produce so many films, including, like, Insidious, uh, all the Paranormal Activity films, uh, all the others, and all the, I think he did some of the uh, spin-off ones, like the Paranormal Entity and... Ascendancy or whatever it was called. I think he did something like that or something with them, but I, I'm not sure Don't hold me to that and he also wrote uh, Chernobyl Diaries, which is another good film by him or written by him at least um, Yeah, uh, more like it stuff like uh, Chernobyl Diaries uh, Quarantine or REC or rec however you want to pronounce that uh, But yeah, I do recommend checking out paranormal activity make sure you got the lights off and uh, if you've got headphones, like if you've got a good headset, uh, you play through like your Xbox or PlayStation, I recommend putting a headset on and just like losing yourself in it. Don't try, don't get distracted by anything else, kind of thing, because it'll take you out the moment, and then you won't, and then you won't uh, get back in that moment as quick. Anyway, that was Paranormal Activity. Next we have, next up we have uh, Insidious. Up there or down there or that way or this way, I'm not sure. Uh, Insidious. Most people have seen this film, I think. But uh, if you haven't, it came out in 2010. It stars Patrick Wilson and Rose Bryan. Um, I'll read the back from now. Uh, Josh and Rennie are a happily married couple with three young children who have moved into an idyllic new suburban ha home. When tragedy strikes to their young son, Josh and Rennie begin to experience things in the house that are beyond explanation. Before long, their lives are turned upside down, down by demonic forces hell-bent on terrorizing their very existence. Forced to seek help and protect their family, they learn the terrifying truth. It's not the house that's haunted, but something far worse. I'm not going to give any more away from that that story kind of thing, but you get most of it from that. But uh, this is insanely creepy, and jump scares in it are galore kind of thing. You will jump a few times at least. Um, and it has a song by Tiny Tim, and if anyone knows who Tiny Tim is, he's got this really like high-pitched voice, and he plays the ukulele. Um... He sings uh, Tiptoeing Through the Tulips. So if you've watched this film and you know that song, it's the creepiest way to use a Tiny Tim song. He's also featured in Spongebob. Uh, if you know that, I do. <laughs> it's a thing. I don't know if I should be proud of that or... Ashamed. Oh. I'm proud of it. I like Spongebob. Whatevs. Jesus. Uh, James Wan, the director. Uh, James Wan. He is one of the best horror directors, modern horror directors, up there at the moment. Uh, and I'm sad to see him leave horror. He's uh, retired from horror, he says, but I really hope he's not, because he's made Insidious. He he wrote and um, directed the original Saw, which is the best Saw. Any others after that were terrible. Um, yeah, he did Insidious, Insidious 2, uh, The Conjuring. Uh, that's one I want to see, because it looks really good. Uh, the music in this, 
The music is probably my favourite thing about this movie, and it is incredible. I bought the soundtrack as soon as I could, kind of thing, and then I've put headphones on and just, like, closed my eyes, and I'm just, like, looking around all the time, like, oh, I'm so creeped out, kind of thing. It is the creepiest music. It plays, um, I don't really know how to say it, like, uh, describe it, kind of thing. Just go check out the songs that are on the soundtrack. Um, you'll be creeped out by the title alone, like, when that just pops up. Uh, insidious across the screen and it's all red and like kind of looks like blood and it's disgusting but and then it's got this high-pitched uh, violin and it's just creepy this film's incredible i love it and it scares the hell out of me uh right we're uh, on to our last film last film we're going through these pretty quick aren't today aren't we uh the last film is halloween i'm gonna just do this for a bit you know this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Anyway, I don't really know where the picture is going, so that's why I'm doing all this. So if you're confused, like, what is he doing? He's like pointing everywhere and he's doing a bit of a dance. What's going on? It's just because I don't know which way, because uh, I'll figure it out. <laughs> I should have figured this out before, but I thought it'd be a, be a bit more funny, a bit more unique, and a bit more. I'm rambling! Let's get back onto the movies! Anyway, the last film is Halloween. That is the title of the movie, and this is th probably the best film to watch on Halloween. came out in 1978, and it is like, new, uh, well, it's 40, 45 years old? 45 years old? Yeah, Jesus. 45 years old, and this film holds its own. Have I just made that up? 45? No, I, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just kind of worried about my math skills then. I've not been to school for a long time. Uh, yeah, Halloween. This is one of the best movies ever ever to watch on Halloween. Uh, it stars Donald Pleasance as Dr. Loomis and Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie. Um, I'm just going to read the back. 15 years ago, Michael Myers brutally massacred his sister. Now, after escaping from a mental hospital, he's back to relive his grisly crime again and again and again. <laughs> uh, Halloween has been fully restored. Ah, oh, this ain't cool. Well, you get the title. Most of it's just like uh, technical features and, on and everything. Nobody wants to know about that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, John Carpenter, the director of this, is one of the best horror directors, sci-fi directors. Uh, he's one of my favorite directors ever. I love all of his films, especially uh, Escape from New York and Big Trouble in Little China. I love them films. They are incredible. The music. Music is amazing in this because most people have heard the Halloween theme. The and all that kind of thing. I probably didn't do it justice there at all. But, uh... Go find that on YouTube kind of thing. Um, that is obviously somewhere. Uh, I had it on my ringtone for like two years because I loved it. And the music is just great. It has the best theme for a horror movie ever. And honestly, I think this beats The Exorcist in a Halloween themed kind of uh, horror theme. Anyway. Um, quick little fun fact, if you didn't know this already. Because uh, if you haven't seen the original, what are you doing again? Because I like the originals more than the remakes. Because the remake of Halloween, I didn't mind it, but I didn't like it as much as I loved this one. Uh, a quick little fun fact as well. The mask that Michael Myers wears is just a, a William Shatner mask turned inside out and painted white. William Shatner, the guy from Star Trek. You know, the... Uh, I don't know. I don't really watch Star Trek, so I can't do an impression of him or anything. Uh, more like it. Uh, if you want some more Halloween kind of related stuff, like Michael Myers stuff, I recommend checking out all of the Michael Myers films. There's like eight, and then there's two remakes. So check all them out, because they're really good. And I'm, um, you know, really good at that. They are amazing films. I like Michael Myers. He's scary as hell, because you think he's a normal person, and then, um, you know, he survives bullets and falling over and uh, falling out windows, and it's just amazing. So they are the six films that I think you should watch on Halloween. And these films have mostly been like uh, ghostly kind of stuff, but that's what scares me. Uh, please feel free to write in the comments what scares you the most in films. Is it slasher films? Is it um, end of the world films? Aliens? Or more ghost stuff like me? Uh, or I don't, I don't know. You could be scared of uh, westerns. I don't know. You could be scared of Clint Eastwood. He's pretty scary. Um, anyway. Rambling again. Uh, this was uh, Movie Review Monday. I hope you enjoyed it kind of thing. And uh, I'll be bringing you some more videos hopefully soon. And next week I'm going to do a COD Ghosts um, videos like all week kind of thing. Also, uh, my competition, my giveaway is 
like amazing. I've gained like 35, 34 subscribers from it, and I'm really happy about that. But I'm think I'm going to do another video about explaining how I'm going to do this competition because I'm going to end it on uh, Thursday, the 31st, actually Halloween. I'm going to end it then and then start a new one straight away. And uh, but I'll do another video on that explaining all that, and you'll get that possibly today, end of today or tomorrow. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like down below and comment on uh, your favourite films to watch on Halloween, uh, what scares you in movies, and uh, or just say, hey, you know, you can do whatever you want in this comments kind of thing. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.